Welcome back to another video. We're going to continue the basic computer exploitation series module on TriHackMe. In today's video, we're going to go over the Kenobi room. So Kenobi is a walkthrough on exploiting a Linux machine, enumerate sample shares, and then manipulating vulnerable version of ProFTPD, and then escalating our privileges with path variable manipulation. So let's go ahead and start the VM. Give that a, we'll give that a minute or two to load up. Okay, so while this machine is spinning up, this room will cover accessing Samba share, manipulating a vulnerable version of ProFTPD to gain initial access. And from there, we're going to escalate our privileges to root via an SUID binary. So we'll go ahead and hit complete. And now we're going to scan the machine with InMap to see how many ports are available. Go ahead and open up a terminal. And then we'll go ahead and copy our IP address that is just displayed. So we'll go ahead and hit copy. And then we're going to run nmap-a-t4-pn-p- and then copy and paste the IP address. And then we can save the output of the file using dash OA. We can name it something like thm-kenobi. So there we go. For the sake of time, I already ran this nmap scan. And let me go ahead and zoom in just so you guys can see. We have 21, port 22, port 80, 111, 139, 445, and 2049. Using the dash p dash option scan for all ports. So these are ports that we generally don't need for this box. So when we look at the question asking how many ports are open, we only have seven open ports. So task number two, we're going to be enumerating Samba for shares. So Samba is the standard Windows inoperability suite of programs for Linux and Unix. It allows end users to access and use files, printers, and other commonly shared resources on a company's internet or internet. It's often, to ref it's often referred to as a network file system or NFS. And Samba is based on the common client server protocol of server message block or SMB. SMB is developed only for Windows and without Samba or other computer platforms would be isolated from Windows machines, even if they're part of the same network. So let's go ahead and answer the questions below. So we'll go ahead and bring our terminal back. Let's go ahead and do control D to split our screen. So InMap has the ability to automate a wide variety of networking tasks. So this script over here is going to enumerate the SMB shares of this IP address. So our IP is actually listed here. So just to double check 10.10.70.41, 10.10.70.41. So we can just go ahead and copy this command and paste it in our terminal. Hit enter. This may take a second. And SMB has two ports, 445 and 139. So using the nmap command, how many shares have been found? All right, so the command just finished. Let me go ahead and zoom in. So it looks like we have an IPC share, an anonymous share, and then the print share. So it looks like we have three different shares. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. So on most distributions of Linux, SMB client is already installed. So let's go ahead and run this following command. We'll replace this IP over here with our actual IP. So we'll go ahead and run SMB client. And then we'll do a slash 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 10.10.70.41. So in the screenshot below, it shows that they listed out the anonymous share. So let's go ahead and type anonymous. So let me go ahead and fix that. Hit enter. And we are in. So we'll just do an ls to see the contents here. So it looks like there's a log.txt. So now we're connected to the network share of the target machine. So now that we're connected, list the files on the share we did with ls. What's the file that we can see? It'll be log.txt. And then we can recursively download the SMB share to it, but we'll be downloading it locally to our machine. So let's go ahead and exit out of this here the screen. So let's go ahead and run SMB git dash capital R, which is going to pull everything from the anonymous share recursively and do SMB slash slash 10.10.70.41 and then specify the anonymous share go ahead and hit enter 
Looks like that went through. We'll just do an ls real quick and see that we did pull the log.txt file. All right, I'll open the file on the share. There's a few interesting things found. So go ahead and cat the log file that is shown and then we'll go ahead and run pipe that to more. So it looks like they generated an SSH key, public private key pair for the Kenobi user. This is the directory path. And then it's going to show information like configuration information about the pro FTP server. All right, go ahead and clear that. So FTP is running on port 21. You can verify that by looking over here. And so in our earlier in-map scan, we, it showed us port 111, which is going to be right here. So this is just a server that converts the remote procedure call or RPC program number into universal addresses. So when a you so when an RPC service is started, it tells the RPC bind that the address at which it is listening and the RPC program number is prepared to serve. In our case, port one 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 is an access to a network file system. So let's go ahead and use nmap to make this further. So we'll go ahead and copy this command listed here. Go ahead and run this in our terminal, hit enter. And as we can see, the output shows us an NFS dash show mount. So it's going to show us the var mount. So the var mount is available. Let's go ahead and go on to task number three. In this task, we're going to gain initial access with Pro FTPD. So Pro FTPD is a free and open source FTP server compatible with Unix and Windows systems. It's also been very vulnerable in the past software releases of this Pro FTPD software. So let's get the version of Pro FTPD using netcat. Go ahead and clear this out. So we'll do netcat the IP and then the port that FTP is running on support 21. And here we go. It shows us the version, which is 135. And if we go ahead and look in our in map scan results on port 21, it also shows us the version number. So we'll go ahead and copy 135. And now we can use Searchploit to find exploits for this particular software version. So we'll go ahead and split our terminal. Go ahead and zoom in for you. And then let's do Searchploit Pro FTPD 1. Three, five, and it shows us four results. So how many exploits are there for the Pro FTPD version that's running? It's going to be four. And it says you should have found an exploit from Pro FTPD's mod copy module. So we do see that there are three results for that. And the mod copy module implements site CPFR and site CP2. CPFR can be referred to as copy from and CPTO can be referred to as copy to. So we can use this to copy files directories from one place to another on the server. Any unauthenticated client can leverage these two commands over here to copy files from any part of the file system to a chosen directory or destination, which will be our local host directory. And we know that the FTP service is running as a Kenobi user based on the log file that we, we read earlier and that an SSH key pair was generated for that same user. Go ahead and complete. Now we're going to copy Kenobi's private key using the two CPFR and CPTO commands. So in the screenshot, we'll just follow what this user did. So back over here in our netcat shell, we'll go ahead and run site CPFR and then home Kenobi dot SSH and then the private key, which is ID underscore RSA. So we're copying that it went through and then we're going to copy it over using cpto we're going to copy it over to var tmp and then name it id underscore rsa copy successful great and we knew that the var directory was a mount we could see based on task two so now we've moved kenobi's private key to the var tmp directory which we will mount to our local host so let's mount the var tmp directory to our machine so back over here, we'll go ahead and go to our Kenobi directory real quick. And then we'll run the file command, map, make directory, mount Kenobi NFS. To keep it short, I'm just going to name it Ken. 
and we'll need to specify sudo. So what that went through, let's go ahead and run mount to mount the var directory to our new kin directory that we created in the mount directory. So go ahead and grab the IP 101070.41 and specify the var mount point and then mount it over to mount kin. Go ahead and hit enter. I want to run sudo. So that just finished. Now we'll just do an ls just to see the contents in the kin directory. So as we can see, this is all the contents from that var mount from the target machine. So now we have a network mount on our deployed machine. We can go to the var tmp directory and get the private key, and then we can log into the Kenobi user account on that target machine. So we'll go ahead and copy over the private key to our local directory. So we'll run copy mount kin tmp id underscore rsa and then specify the period to copy it locally to our Kenobi directory. Hit enter. Now we see that we do in fact have the private key now. Now we need to remove the R for both the group and other users. So now we'll go ahead and run change mod 600 id underscore rsa. Now we see that the R or the read permissions were removed for both the invite group and the other users. Now we'll go ahead and try to SSH Kenobi at 101070.41. Go ahead and hit yes. Now we are in. So the first thing you want to do is just run who am I just to verify that you are indeed the Kenobi user and the directory weren't. So we're already in the Kenobi home directory. And we'll go ahead and cat user.txt to grab our flag. Copy that over, paste it. And let's try to escalate our privileges to the root user. So let's first understand what the SUID, SGID, and sticky bits are. So the SUID bit is this S in the user bit in the user field. So the read, write, and S. This allows the user to execute the file with the permissions of the file owner. So for example, if this was root and this was Kenobi, it would allow me, since I'm in the Kenobi group, to execute the file with the root user privileges because the S would be over here in this field. And then the SGID bit is the same thing. It allows the user to run a file with the permission of the group owner. It's the same thing. If I was just a regular user on the machine and the file was in the root group, it would allow me to run that file with root level privileges if it had this SGID bit over here. And the sticky bit doesn't really have any meaning. It's just used to prevent users from deleting other users' files, which is shown with this capital T bit over here. Let's go ahead and search for files on the Kenobi machine with the SUID bit set. So we'll go ahead and copy. So we'll go ahead and copy this command over here. Go ahead and paste it in our terminal. Hit enter. And now we're going to see what file looks particularly out of the ordinary. So by just taking a quick glance, to me, this looks out of ordinary. So we'll go ahead and so we'll go ahead and copy this and paste it, see if that's right. So it looks like that's right. Perfect. Now run the binary. How many options appear? Okay, go ahead and hit enter. So one, two, three different options. So strings is a command on Linux that looks for human readable strings on a binary. So this shows us the binary that's running without a full path for the different commands. So we'll go ahead and just do one. And if we run curl i local host, it'll show us the same options. And the uname dash r, same thing is going to show that for option number two with the kernel version. And then if config will show us option three, which is if config. So these right here show the binary running without the full path. So the full path will be, you know, specifying user slash bin in order to run curl, but we don't have to since we don't have to, the binary doesn't have to run with the full path specified. So as this file runs, it's going to run with root user privileges and we can manipulate that to gain a root shell. So we'll go ahead and run the following commands over here. First, we're going to copy the bin shell or bin slash sh shell called, and we're going to call it curl. So we're going to take echo and we're going to change the 
we're going to change curl to bin slash sh and then we're going to give it the correct permissions which is going to be change mod 777 which will allow read write and execute for both the user and group and other users and it's using our path variable to find the curl binary which is actually the version of user slash sh and then this is going to allow us to run the file with root the user bin menu and it's going to give us a shell as root let's go ahead and hit complete and then let's go back over here to our terminal so let's go ahead and navigate to the temp directory first and clear that out echo bin sh and then save that to curl and they're going to run change mod 777 curl and we're going to export the path to equal slash tmp dollar sign path and then we're going to run the menu path full. We're going to run the whole full binary path for menu and then enter the one option for status check. And if we do a who am I, we are not the root user. So we'll go ahead and navigate to root, do an ls, just see that we do in fact have the root file over here and we'll cat that out. Copy and then paste that over here, submit it. And that is it for the box. Now we finished the Kenobi room. Let's move on to the next one.